Well, I'm gradually working out the controls for this unit. I didn't get any thermostat or control panel for it, so I'm just going to make everything up as I go. Just enough to get it to run properly and avoid freezing it or doing something silly. And I've got the contactor working. In the second position, I'm just currently working out uh, the pump on. It's going to have a lead going from active bridging to the blue. I had to run two cables because I don't have a uh, multi-core control cable. A good eight-core industrial control cable would have done it, but since I've got three phase and single phase, I might as well use the single phase lead as the active and neutral. I need a neutral for the lamp and the contactor. And uh, this one here is just the control. The white, blue and red's not used. So it works. It's crude but effective. Oh, I've got partial power onto it, I'll just demonstrate. So that would be normally fan and pump only run. And that's compressor run. The neon ain't exactly green, but it tells me the power's on. And so does the contactor. The fourth position on this switch won't be used, which is there. It's designed for a voltmeter to read off then one, two and three phases, so it's got four positions. I'm only going to be using off, position one and position two. I might find another use for the other one, but it's not needed until now. Maybe a boost fan or something. Alright, well this is the fan assembly off the top. Twin updraft fans, I believe. That one's kind of stuck, but I think that's because I've jammed it on its side. because I've jammed on its side, it's jammed up, but I'll just do a quick fan run and pump test see if we can make this thing work so connect the power first that's what the box looks like, nasty foam all this foam's just turned to shit peel it all off and just piss it off there's no need for that inside a condenser uh, it's only noise deadening really, it's not so much insulation even down the back here it's falling off and filling up the cabinet. It's rubbish. Alright, let's try this out. Just remember at home, this is 240 volt mains across this panel here, so don't play around with this shit unless you know what you're doing. Ooh. Have a little puke. Pump's working. Dan didn't do anything though. Yeah, definitely pump working and water in the system. Uh, why isn't that fan working? Let's redo that connection. Okay, well the fans only work when the compressor's running. So I might change that so that they uh, continue running after I turn the compressor off. But for now let's just poke this compressor contactor. That's working. That other one will be trying to start, but it's just because I bent the bloody bracket. It does move. It did move before I put it down over there and bent it. So that's good. It's actually a downdraft fan. It's blowing at me, not up the top. That explains why there's so much crap stuck to the coil. I've been picking up all this foam dust and just impregnating it inside the coil. No wonder there was no airflow coming out. Poor old thing. Oh well, that's a good job for the cleaner. Get some condenser cleaner and other crap, scrape all that shitty foam off, scrape all this out, flush the system out and find any leaks. Probably pressurise it to 50 kPa or something like that, at the most, 25 kPa even. Just a static pressure test to find any leaks, it's not designed to run under pressure. Cool. That's working. Alright, well, I haven't wired the fans to run when the pump runs yet, but I think I've got everything sorted out. I mean, I'm by no means an electrical engineer, and this is a little bit sloppy. There's nothing to even tie those earth wires to. I might as well just tie them together or something. If anything, to that uh, lamp housing there, which is aluminium. But still, it's, there's nothing live on it. Uh, yeah, let's give it a shot. This is first 
selection is pump and fan when I get the fan working. Yep, pumps on. It's puking a little bit. And this is compressor. And fan. Beautiful. Fan's working. Working. Lights on. Oh yeah, they're cold. Very cold. Cold coming out of the TXV, cold on the return. Cold straight up to the compressor. Side glass has a few bubbles in it. There's obviously no, no airflow going through this coil. Yeah, that's working quite well. Damn, that coil gets hot quick. That's really hot. Oh, this one's going to be a good runner. Really good. Just needs a lot of clean-up. Oh, well, that's today's uh, electrical engineering project. Well, not 100% finished now. I've got to finish the casing off. Put that in there, get the lamp to work when the fan and pump selection is made. Because right now it doesn't. It only comes on the compressor. You didn't like that. There's still a bit of back pressure in the system. Makes the lights dim. Yeah, not starting. Got one of those giant run caps in there too. Nice big ones. But I've just got to make that light work when it goes to fan and, fan and pump. Make the fan work when I put it onto fan and pump. And put the housing on this thing. Then I'll be able to hook up some water, hook up the indoor coil. I think I'll just chuck those fans on and rake some of that foamy crap off the coil and just see what happens. See if I can get any leaks. Now, for those of you wondering, I don't know what the capacity of this unit is. Can't find any data plate or sticker or anything on it. If there is, it's probably been painted over. The outside of this thing's been painted. But I can't see anywhere. I can't see any outline of a sticker or anything, so... At a guess... I'd say the refrigeration side of it's pretty big on the single phase side, so maybe 8 kilowatts, 9 kilowatts. What that transfer, or what that corresponds to in water-based cooling, hydronic cooling, I've no idea. But either way, it's big enough to uh, make a fair impact on my power bill if I decide to use it. You'd uh, rack up a pretty good power bill with this thing. Now, in case you're wondering where the compressor is, it's hiding up in here. It's an R22 Copeland. Look at that funny little box on the top of it. I've never seen one like that before. Definitely American. Um, yeah, not much else to say about this one. That's a liquid accumulator. The discharge side, which is nice and hot because there's nobody fan on the condenser. Liquid line dry, filter dryer. Sight glass is showing a little air bubble in there, but or gas bubble, but. It's all full all the way down to the TX valve, just with static standing liquid. And that's icy cold. I have to get my little temp probe onto it. Factory set. Temperature, that's a thermostatic control in the middle. That one there is thermostatic on the suction side. This is the return line. The inlet goes through this line with the TX valve is feeding. So that's probably the water inlet and water outlet. So they're both thermostatically checked. And there's a high-low pressure control, one going to the high side of the compressor up there, and the other one going up to the top, which is where the suction line is on the compressor. So it's got full control monitoring inside the cabinet. It won't ice up or do anything silly without one of these clicking in and shutting it down. Probably where this thing would have an advantage, it'll keep that coil constantly cold. And as soon as a call for cooling is made, it slams the pump into gear and off you go. It'd be a very low downtime, very very quick well, quick rise time as far as temperature is concerned. And the funny thing is there's no reversing valve. It's cooling only. That's why I didn't get why they didn't just pipe refrigerant into the building, the indoor coil. There's no reversing valve. It's not a heat pump, air source water heat pump. It's just a cooling unit. But kind of neat. Oh, enough rambling. Thanks for watching.